Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 517. I'm Kevin Coulson, and this is an interview with Archbishop Beach. Okay, before we get too far into the interview, I need you guys to like the program on YouTube and Facebook. It's Archbishop Beach. You gotta like it. There's, I mean, you gotta do that for us, okay? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, please comment in the in the uh, comment section if you have not subscribed yet to Anglican TV on YouTube. Now's your chance to subscribe. Let's see. The last time we spoke on the record, I think it was an interview right after you were elected uh, into a leading role in GAFCON. And I thought we could talk a little bit about what's happened over the last year. I think it's been a year now since we've been in Jerusalem. Uh, give me a quick summary of what you've been doing with your time. <laughs> with my time? <laughs> yes. Right. Well, of course, I'm still uh, the Bishop of the Diocese of the South. Mm -hmm. and I'm still uh, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church in North America. And so uh, fulfilling those duties uh, uh, keeps me on the road a lot. Um, I think the biggest thing that we, we had as far as GAFCON is concerned is we had the G19 event in Dubai uh, with those of the suffering church. And that was a powerful, powerful experience. And to uh, be able to come alongside and, and hear stories and uh, support and pray for those who are in places where it's really hard and difficult uh, to be a Christian uh, in, in, in ways that's not difficult here uh, was a tremendous blessing and I think a big uh, encouragement to them. New leadership at GAFCON, uh, yourself and uh, Benjamin Kwashi are uh, taking leading roles. What do you think that changes now in the dynamic, having somebody from North America in leadership and somebody from Nigeria uh, again in leadership in GAFCON? Well, I really did not want, uh, I, mean, I just felt like someone from the Global South should have been in leadership of GAFCON. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is what the will of the primates uh, was. Once I found out um, Archbishop Ben was going to be the general secretary, it changed my thinking a lot because um, as if you know him, and uh, I'm sure you do, uh, he is such a, a fire plug, such a man full of the Holy Spirit, and he gets things done, and he doesn't mince words with the truth, and uh, he loves God's people. And so I'm really excited about uh, serving with him. The other is the deputy chair, Laurent Mbanda uh, from Rwanda. Uh, what a gr another great, tremendous leader in the church. And I think um, with those guys, uh, it's 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 tremendous privilege to be able to serve serve with them. We just had an ACNA assembly in Plano, and I heard some. I wasn't able to attend, but I heard some interesting uh, news uh, about a brand new prayer book. Uh, tell me about that and its development. Well, we're very excited. Uh, all the the work, literally, of ten years of um, input from the church and and prayer and and hard work by Archbishop uh, Emeritus Duncan and others uh, have produced us. Actually, I got it here. Oh, Let's see if that yeah. worked. Oh, nice. Uh, so I get this on the screen. There it is. <laughs> you got it, yeah. Um, and uh, I am just very excited about it. I, I really believe it is uh, going to be one of these prayer books that will be used uh, around the Anglican world for years and years and years and years to come. It is uh, uh, full of... Um, let me rephrase that. It's re it's recovered some of the great tradition of the church, but obviously it's in contemporary language. But also there are ways to, to use it that I, not only from a family as private devotions or, or, or an individual say in the daily office every day, but corporate worship as well. Um, one of the best parts to me of the whole thing is the Psalter. Um, back in the 1960s, the Church of England commissioned C.S. Lewis and T.S. Eliot to uh, uh, redo the Coverdale Psalter, and it was never used. And so we've taken their work and edited it a little bit, and that is the Psalter in the new prayer book, and it is really, really wonderful. So now folks um, are starting to use it. Um, we're hearing good things, uh, encouragement. People uh, feel like it's something that's uh, uh, helpful in their own worship, and so I'm excited about it. Hope you'll get one and, and try it out. And you can probably get that through the ACNO website. I'll provide a link in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, okay. One of the big things we had at the launch of uh, the ACNA in Plano in 2009 was the call for uh, a thousand church plants uh, by Archbishop Duncan. And a lot of people got stuck on that number. <laughs> if it's not a thousand, we fail. 
Oh, come on, really? Isn't that, the, isn't that the North American way? <laughs> yeah, it is. That's so American of us. Yeah. How about 999? You missed it. You missed it. Sorry. Well, I guess we have some good news to report. Well, we do. I, I think totally, I don't know the exact number, but the last I heard it was 460-something churches that, that we've actually planted. Mm -hmm. uh, but last year we planted a church um, every uh, 10 days, I believe is the number. Uh, which is really amazing. Secondly, um, what Archbishop Duncan did, and I'm so grateful uh, for this in my own thinking, is he, he pumped into the ACNA a DNA of church planting. Mm. That that's part of what we're supposed to be about. If we're not planting churches, we're not doing our job. And, um, and p most people have caught on to that. And, and so it really is a priority because in planting churches, you're able to reach people that you normally couldn't reach. And I, I, I would have never believed that until I planted a church. And I saw that people who have driven by churches that s sat on the corner for years and years, they become invisible for whatever reason. When a new church starts, they're able to reach them. It's, it's, it's fascinating. It, it's, it's an amazing see the, the dichotomy involved in uh, planting churches and the multiple levels of people that get involved. And at it some is, point, they, they see this and they want to get involved. Exactly. But yeah. it is hard work. And we've learned a lot of things along the way. Um, we have some um, um, good uh, processes now to, to help with our church planters, make sure we don't send the wrong people out in the field. And not everybody's cut out to be a church planter. It's just it's just a unique role. Uh, and it, it is hard work. A lot of folks have to be by vocational to begin with. And, um, and you have to have a, a certain get up and go that a lot of people don't have. So, um, We've learned a lot, but it's been, I mean, not every church has succeeded. Uh, that's the, the other thing um, about church plants. Not all of them work out, but we have seen some incredible work of the Lord all around the ACNA. It's very encouraging. You were also reelected to be the Archbishop of the ACNA at this event in Plano. Five-year term. What's the next five years of the ACNA going to look like? Well, first, let me just say um, it was... Uh, I guess a real encouragement that the bishops had the confidence to, to let me serve another five years or to ask me to serve. Um, and I, um, I really take this as a, you know, just a serious, um, uh, what would be the right word? Um, a compliment, but also a, a stewardship of, of what God has uh, called the ACNA to be. I hope the next five years we're going to continue the theme that we heard from the assembly, and that is discipleship. Uh, that Jesus, um, you know, the Great Commission is to go make disciples. It's not to go build churches. It's not to go um, um, do great works, which which the, all these things are great, not to lead great worship services, uh, not to build buildings, whatever it might be. He called us to make disciples. He didn't even call us to go make Christians. Um, or even Anglicans. He said, go make disciples. And I, I really think that that emphasis that we're going to see over the next few years um, should be uh, something that will hopefully impact all of North America. Uh, just a little side note, um, in February, we've, uh, we're joining hands with the North American Lutheran Church. Uh, we did a, mm -hmm. a, great, a, a joint thing on discipleship, and we're going to actually sponsor a discipleship conference in Orlando together with the North American Lutherans. And so um, hopefully... Uh, we will see folks who are faithful, committed, uh, not only um, in their own walk, but, you know, you really aren't, aren't a disciple till you have a disciple. Um, so, you know, who's your Timothy? Um, who's your Mary? Um, and so that's something that we're going to be encouraging a lot. Well, they're an interesting group. They uh, have kind of the same story we do uh, within their own infrastructures fighting politics and uh it's, it's nice to see that they're, they're making their way through and joining us. I want you to put your GAFCON hat on for a minute, and I want to talk about hard soil. Uh, GAFCON 1 was the launch of the ACNA. Clearly, America was uh, good soil. Uh, it was ruddy and fertile for uh, a, a planting church like the ACNA to come in and set straight doctrine, set straight straight the things were out, that were out of sorts and you now have a vibrant growing province here in america gafcon too desired to to plant some seeds uh in england and it seems that you know the ground there is much harder uh, than it was here in america what what have you seen um 
I, I've seen a lot of very godly, good, devout people who can't get on the same page, yeah. uh, whether that's within the Church of England or whether it's outside the Church of England. And, um, and until folks figure out how to work together um, and focus on the essentials and let some of the non, non-essentials uh, you know, sit on the wayside, um, it's going to be it's going to be very difficult. Um, there are some great folks in the Church of England. And, um, there, there's some great things happening there, um, but they're now being pressured to do things and say things and um, uh, participate in things that they find uh, that goes against Scripture, and and somebody has got to step up and begin to lead within the church and outside the church. There's uh, so a lot. It's a big challenge. There's a lot of tribalism in England. I don't know, you know, if it's just built into their DNA or it's from the, their caste systems of the past or whatever it is, but uh, every English person has a different answer to how this is going to be solved. And none of them are the same. And I, I have much pity and uh, humility and prayers for GAFCON in this, trying to set up a, a, a space for Orthodox Anglicanism on the shores of England. Well, what we want to do is support those who are fighting for the faith. And uh, we're not trying to create any church. We're not trying. I mean, we, we aren't. If that happens, it happens. But we want to support those who are standing firm for the Bible and the teachings of Scripture and seeking to reach the lost for Christ and feed the hungry and, and do the work of the gospel. Um, at the same time, we can't sit by and, and just uh, ignore some of the blatant, uh, in-your-face things that are happening there. That are that are hurting Christians. Um, the culture um, there is 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 often an excuse that people use to compromise the scriptures. But uh, we're not al- supposed to allow the script, the culture to to lead us away from the Word of God and to lead us in. In other words, we, we shouldn't let the culture set our agenda. Our agenda should be set by the Lord and and His Word. And so I, I just think we need to keep praying for those folks. There's some, as I said, some great folks there, but they're in, they're in a tough spot. Well, uh, you brought up culture. That kind of introduces our next topic. Uh, you may not know this, but this is GAFCON Sunday. I got an email from you this morning telling me such. And, uh, <laughs> <I do. laughs> GAFCON Sunday also happens to fall on World Pride Sunday. Uh, this is the World Pride event uh, where... Uh, LGTP uh, individuals are having parades around the world celebrating their identity and what they're looking for in life. Um, there is a large contrast now between the church and the culture. What is GAFCON's hope in, in meeting with the culture? Our hope is that we would reach folks and transform them through the power of the Holy Spirit to come to know Jesus Christ. Um, that is the key. The, uh, the, we, we can battle with the culture all day long. I mean, we've seen it all throughout history, but we've got to stay focused on the gospel and sharing Jesus Christ with folks. Um, we have a number of folks in our church that um, uh, have been transformed because they've come to Jesus Christ by faith. And, uh, and they've been discipled in the faith and they've learned um, how to live what's, what God calls holy, righteous lives. Not all of them are married, some of them stay single. Um, uh, but we are not attempting to uh, create. It is, it is ironic that it is on the same Sunday. I don't know if anybody realized that in the planning or not. Um, I find it quite ironic that um, here on that Sunday, we're appealing to the church to, hey, we need your support. We need your help. We need your prayers because we are fighting. And, and it's not individuals we're fighting. We're fighting uh, the enemy. Um, the spirit of the age and, 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 and um, old Slewfoot, who's seeking to to mess everybody up and get us off track. And so um, we want to uh, encourage God's people to pray for the move, this, this thing called the Global Anglican Future Conference. We believe that, uh, and I personally believe, because I've seen it again and again, that prayer is the key to the whole thing. Uh, asking God to renew, revive, uh, call to repentance his people um, or those who call themselves his people, to repentance and faith, and then also praying for our cities, praying for for our communities, praying for those who do not know the Lord in our own personal lives, asking God to invade them, to to invade their situations, to send the hound of heaven after them, to to impact them in ways that they would want to turn to the Lord and be saved. 
GAFCON represents the largest segment of Anglicans in the world, and GAFCON decided not to attend Lambeth if, if invited, and many, uh, all the primates were invited to Lambeth. What message does GAFCON send to the Church of England and to the leadership of the Anglican Communion by not attending Lambeth 2020? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, That's all right. I'm my Bible again. This just came to me. This morning's daily offering. You got that too. Was from Second uh, Thessalonians three. Um, Paul's writing to these folks, and he says, "If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with them, that they may be ashamed." Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Wow. Another God coincidence. You know? And how, <laughs> how many times did God tell us in his word about this? I, I've been trying to think of a way to explain it um, because we're called the dividers because we won't attend. We won't follow along. Not too long ago, my wife, Alice, and I went on an um, excursion where we, uh, <laughs> we went on wave runners or, or, or jet skis. Um, out, out in out in the waters, and um, so they had this orientation process at the beginning, and um, they said, "Now we want you to follow the leader, and and make sure you stay in between these boundaries because over on this boundary, there's some rocks that are hidden, and we don't want you to hit those because you'll end up hurt." And so we're on this excursion. We're all following the leader, and it was a great time. We had a wonderful time. But what if the leader began to go off and, and disobey the instructions and go off into the water where all these hidden rocks were? Then you have a choice. Do, do you follow the leader or do you obey the instructions so that you stay safe? And I think what the GAFCON primates are saying is Archbishop Welby and the Anglican establishment are now leading us off and away from the instructions that are clearly given by God's word, uh, the, the tradition of the church and even their own rules the Lambeth, Lambeth Conference resolution and are leading us off the, re, off the path. And so do we follow them? And we're saying, no, we can't take our provinces there. We can't take our diocese there. It's wrong. Um, another way to say it is, say you're trying to get from one village to another and you ask someone for directions. They say, you, you take this path and you have to hike through the bush, hike through the, the woods um, or walk uh, you got to walk this direction. But when you get to this place, be careful. Don't take that route because there's snake, there's snake pits over there and, and you'll get hurt. So you're going down the path and the leader says, oh, we're going to go this direction, not this direction. And guess what happens? You fall into the snake pits or you get bit, you get hurt. And we're saying, no, we're going to follow what Jesus has told us to do and what God's word clearly says. And to not do that is to disobey the Lord. And so... We're not trying to be dividers. We're just saying we have to honor the Lord's word. And we wish and we pray for the Anglican establishment to lead us toward God's way. Um, I think the other thing I'd like to say is I think we really need a group of folks. And I, so, so the people listening to this, I, I would like to challenge you on this. This is GAFCON Sunday, obviously. But I want to ask you to pray for Archbishop Justin and for Archbishop Josiah and the Anglican establishment, that they would change course, that they would realize that by accepting folks who are living in immoral lifestyles as bishops and treating them as such, that they have compromised, that they're basically validating that as a version of Christianity, which it is not. And they're saying this is okay. It's just a different culture, or that's the way their church does it. No, it's not. It's not the right way to do things. And so we need to pray. Seriously, uh, I invite you to join me in praying uh, one day a week, uh, praying and fasting. Maybe you'll fast a whole day or fast a meal and pray for the leadership of the Anglican communion that God will convict them to return to his word and live it out totally. So I, that's a long-winded answer. Did I actually no, answer? No, you, you answered the question just fine. So let's uh, finish up here. You and I know a secret. Tomorrow, the busiest Anglican we know is going on vacation. <laughs> yeah. 
So what does an archbishop, you don't have to tell us where you're going, but what does an archbishop do on vacation? Well, how do you relax? Uh, well, first I'll go um, with my family. Mm -hmm. And fortunately with my family, it is relaxing. You know, some families it's not that way. But I like to go to the beach. Um, I, I guess it fits the name. So uh, swimming in the waves, uh, walking the beach, uh, doing a lot of reading, uh, resting, sleeping, praying, spending time with the Lord. Uh, that's how I like to spend holiday. All right. I want to thank you for your time. Do You're enjoy your, your vacation starting tomorrow probably 8 a.m. Suntan lotion. I recommend it. Thank I'm you. Kevin Carlson. This has been an interview with Archbishop Foley Beach.